My name is Nyombora and this is What's Cooking Kenya. Today I'm going to show you how to make a very easy fruitcake. I know it's the Christmas season, you can see I'm dressed in red, ready for the Christmas season. And one of the most requested cake is a fruitcake. So today I'm going to show you how to make it at home. So no buying guys, let's get started. The basic ingredients are the flour, of course you'll need some flour, two eggs, some bit of salt, sugar, and you need to make sure that the brown sugar that you're using has molasses. I know there are some brown sugars that don't have molasses, so make sure that yours has molasses. We're going to use some margarine or butter. And then for the spices, we'll need a blend of spices. Uh, we have cloves here, we have ginger, we have uh, mixed spice, we have nutmeg, we have cinnamon, and then we also need some vanilla essence, some baking soda or bicarbonate of soda, and then for the fruits, we are going to need some raisins, mixed pail, mango peel and some cherries don't worry about all this stuff at the end of the video i'll tell you a shop where you can really buy them at a really cheap price so let's get baking so the first thing is that you need to measure if you're new to baking please listen to this attentively always measure your ingredients i know our mothers told us pima kwa macho but this doesn't work in baking so let's start by measuring one cup of brown sugar so I have one cup of measurement here. So I've measured my one cup of brown sugar. You put it into your sophoria and then you put a quarter cup. This is quarter cup measurement. Again, don't worry about this measuring ingredients. At the end of the video, I'll tell you where to buy them really cheaply. So just keep on watching the video. So we need a quarter cup of the margarine or butter. So again, you just put it here. And then you make sure always with butter, you pack it, and then you remove the excess. So remove the excess. And then we put it here. That's a quarter cup of butter. And then we put the spices. So one teaspoon of brown cinnamon. So again, I'm using this uh, measuring teaspoons. They have the teaspoons indicated. So that's one teaspoon of cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon is this one. So I put one teaspoon of cinnamon and then half a teaspoon of cloves. So I have my cloves here. So half a teaspoon. Again, you have to be very careful with cloves. Cloves can be very overpowering in terms of uh, the spices. So just be very careful with it. Just put very little. So we have our cloves. Next, we have our ginger. Again, if you have fresh ginger, you can use fresh ginger. So we have our ginger. And then, those are the basic spices that you need. The ginger, cinnamon, and cloves to make a really nice fruitcake. So these ones, I just add them because I have them and I like the spices. So I'm just going to add like just a quarter teaspoon of mixed spice. I really love my spices. I think in another life I was Indian. <laughs> so I'm going to add just a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And then we are going to add our salt, half a teaspoon, this is half a teaspoon salt so there we go and then we are going to add our raisins our raisins are here we need two cups of raisins so we come with a cup measurement again so 
Nimesha. Nimesha two cups. So that's one cup. So that's the second cup. And then we add one cup of water here. And then we're going to bring this to a boil. So you can see our, our mixture, the way it is looking. So we have the raisins, the brown sugar, the spices, and the margarine in here. So what you're going to do next is that we're going to bring this mixture to a boil. So as our mixture is boiling, we are going to be sifting our flour. Um, so our flour, we are going to need um, two and a half cups. So our cup measurement again. And then whenever you are dealing with dry ingredients, always sift your flour. So we come here, we take make sure you level so that it's full like that. So we sift, that is uh, one cup, and then we add the second cup, and then half a cup. So half of this cup, so there is half a cup. So we put it there, and then we sift. And then we're going to use the raising agent that we're going to use for the cake is baking soda. For most fruit cakes, they use baking soda. Not all, but for most, eh? we use baking soda. And for this baking soda, we're going to use one teaspoon. So you just put it here. You also sift it because it's a dry ingredient. So we just continue, just sifting. Please do not skip this process of sifting because what happens is that some of the unga that we buy has some impurities in there and you don't want them to translate into your cake. So you better sift and it will also give a very nice texture to our cake. So don't skip. Most people think that this process, oh, it's unnecessary, but it's actually very much necessary. Whenever you are making a cake, always, always sift your dry ingredients. You can see how easy it is. So just tap the sieve and everything just comes down. So we are almost done. And I can hear our mixture is also coming to a boil. So you can see that there are big, some big pieces just left on the sieve. This is what we are trying to sieve out. They are not good for our cake. So we have sieved out. Our mixture is coming to a boil, so we want to stir it a bit. Our mixture has boiled, so what we are going to do, we are going to let it cool. I know some people will be impatient and want to continue the process, but what happens, the next step is to add the eggs. So if we add eggs to this mixture while it's hot, then the eggs are going to cook and you'll have spoiled your cake. So be very patient, we are going to let it cool until it is lukewarm. So you just keep it aside. And then you move on to doing something else as you wait for it to cool. So after your mixture has cooled down, you can even test by putting your finger in there. It has really cooled down. What we are going to do, we are going to add our two eggs. So the two eggs are here. And always in baking, whenever you break your eggs, always remember to put vanilla. So we are going to put one, one cup full of vanilla so you just use your lid eh? you put your vanilla and then you mix it with your fork then you put it into your mixture and then after that now all this these are my maldois doughs that i like adding to my fruit cake so it's not a must you put but i really like the the taste of the orange peel so you just put according to your taste I just like to put a little and then this is dried mango if it's not available to you then you don't need to use it so I just put it 
these are cherries so what you do what i normally do with the cherries is that i have them and then I put them into the mixture so you can if you don't have them you can leave them out so you just have them according to your taste we're going to have a really rich fruit cake so we've put our cherries our mango peel our orange peel inside here so you just give it a stir and then finally we put our flour so we just stir, stir like this so if if you're not new to making fruit cake i think there's one thing that you have noticed that we did not put alcohol in our fruit cake so that's what i like about this fruit cake that it is actually a non-alcoholic fruit cake. So for the for those people who don't like alcohol, either for religious re reasons or personal preferences, then I would really recommend this fruit cake for you. I also like it a lot because most of my clients they tell me, you know, dini haini ruhusu kunywa pombe. So do you have a fruit cake that that you can make for me? So I normally make for those clients of mine who tell me that dini haini ruhusu. So yeah, so please try it out. So you just take your mixture, you just pour it into your tin. Make sure that you don't leave any of the mixture there. your mixture in the tin now it's time to put it in the oven the oven i had preheated it for at least 15 minutes before you put your baked item so i had uh, put it on we're going to to bake it at around 180 degrees so you can see i've put 180 degrees there and then it's going to be ready in about uh, 50 minutes so you can you can put your time there and then always put the baked good in the middle rack so you can see my oven is in the middle rack so you just put it inside there it's hot never put anything bake anything that you want to bake in a cold oven so it's hot so now we wait for those 40 minutes so it's been 50 minutes and we'd like to check if our cake is ready our fruit cake that we were making so you just open your oven and then your fruit cake and then I have a skewer here you just poke it in if it comes out clean then you know your cake is ready and you need to make sure that you poke different positions not just at the center you also need to poke different places so if it comes out clean then you know that your cake is ready so you can see it, it has some places where it has come out with some bit of maunga maunga you can see some bit of flour so it's not yet exactly ready so we're going to put it back for about five more minutes eh? so even if the recipe says 50 minutes always check your cake always poke it so that you make sure that your cake is ready if it's not ready just put it back into the oven and then now you wait like five more minutes for it to be ready again when we remove it the second time we're going to poke poke again we do the poke test and then we know if it's ready so we need to check again if our cake is ready, the timer has gone off, so you just come here. Again, if you have an oven that doesn't have a timer, you can always use your phone to time your cake. Just put a timer on your phone. So we are going to do the pork test again. We just pork different places, like that, like that, and then you see it's coming out clean. Now if for some reason you find that your cake it's not getting ready inside one tip that you can do is to put foil paper on top so that it doesn't burn and then you put it back because if you don't put foil paper on the top then what will happen is that the top will start burning and it will get a really 
burnt taste that is not pleasing to the taste bud. So that's a tip that I've shared with you. At times it just happens, even to professional bakers, it happens that your cake just decides to have mood swings. So that is what you do. So our cake is ready, we've done the pork test, you can see that it's ready and it's just looking beautiful. You can see the cherries, the green cherries on top here, you can see the mangoes are here, the fruits are here. Hmm? You can imagine the deliciousness that is inside this cake. But we won't know how delicious this cake until you cut into it. So one thing I normally like to tell people is that whenever you bake a cake, leave it in the tin for five minutes before you remove it. It will be much easier to remove. Mm. So our five minutes are over. So what you do, you run your knife round like that. Just round the tin completely. And then you take your plate. You put it here and then you turn it very carefully so remember we had uh, okay so i know our mothers the way they taught us baking is that when your cake just comes out of the oven take a plate and overturn it but no that's not the right process the right process is you wait five minutes for the cake to cool inside the tin and then you, you run your knife all around your tin like that and then you take a flat plate like this one of mine and then you turn it so when you turn it remember we had dusted our tin we had oiled it so we don't expect that there, there's any place that this cake will get uh, stuck so fingers crossed everybody let's see what we have wow look at that eh? it didn't stick anywhere eh? So you can see the margarine and the dusting, it really works, eh? So if you've not been doing that, eh? Can you start doing it, eh? You can see that it really works, eh? So look at our cake. This is our fruit cake. Wow! It looks amazing. Eh? Look at that. We did this. Hmm? So the thing is with fruit cake, it gets better with time. So you will find that if you eat it now, and the person who eats it tomorrow will find it more delicious. So this cake is really good because it keeps for one month and it keeps on getting better and better and better. So like if we are nine days to Christmas, then you can bake it today and then serve it to your people at Christmas and it will be very yummy. So let's cut into the cake. So look at that, doesn't that look amazing? Look at that, you can see the fruits, the green, the orange, eh? it just looks amazing. Hmm? So I wish you guys were here, but me and my cameraman, we are really going to dig into this and really enjoy. But again, as I said, if you'd like to come here and be the people who eat, you're most welcome, just DM me. And then again, if there's something that you've really learned, and you want to show us also dm us and you can come and teach us so that is our fruit cake so there's only one way to know how yummy it is to just cut into it mm. Mm. it's really yummy <laughs> mm. guys again thank you very much for watching this video as i had promised earlier i was going to tell you where to buy all these baking ingredients at a very cheap price so there's some baking shops in town one of them is called top serve it's in kimathi house second floor you can also look them up online and you can call them and order and they deliver there's also another one called easy bake they are on tabeta road again you can also search them and i try to put a link of their websites on this video so that's where you get to buy all these nice ingredients and then you can start your baking journey just from home yes and make delicious treats just like me so if you've not yet subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button and if you've not also hit the bell button please hit it so that you can get notification on when we make a new video thank you again for watching if there's something else that you'd like us to teach you just uh, put it in the comment section and then we're going to make a video for you. So thank you for now and goodbye.